When we hear the word engraving, we usually think of a design that is etched into metal or stone. Some common examples today would be an engraved piece of jewelry or the words and designs that are put on a memorial stone. In printmaking, if an image is created from a wood, metal, or plastic plate that has been carved to hold ink, we call it an engraving. But have you ever heard of a paper engraving? Movies and television have often pictured a scene where a detective discovers a clue by rubbing a pencil over the notepad where someone has written a message before. I'm sure you've seen something like that. We might call that an embossing or an engraving because it was the hand pressure that created that. This is a very low-tech process and it's very similar to this. A ballpoint pen presses through a surface to engrave a soft board beneath it. What makes this intriguing is the multiple layers that can be built up, each with their own color and function within a design. Let me demonstrate the process for you. We begin with a fairly simple line drawing executed on the matte side of a piece of palette paper. Now you can use other types of paper. I'm using palette paper because it's really very sturdy and it doesn't tear easily. Then tape the design to a piece of illustration board and hinge it just along one side so that it can be lifted up and placed back down again in the same position. Then take another little piece of masking tape and hold it in place on this side until we can lift it up again. Now, I have a big ballpoint pen with a very rounded nib. Some ballpoints, you know, they tend to have a very fine pointy nib to them and it cuts right through the paper. So look for one that has a wide rounder tip. And it's really helpful to have multiple colors of the same pen. Now because there's no color on the illustration board beneath this yet, the first lines that I engrave are going to remain white. So using firm pressure, I'm just going to go around the outside and the outline of the sunflower and trace those lines like so. Okay, so I've traced all the lines that I want to remain white and let's just take a look at what we have. Well, they're very hard to see, aren't they? Let's see what happens when we take a yellow Crayola color stick and just rub it over the top of the design. Now you're starting to be able to see it, aren't you? Now colored pencil could be used for this project as well. It's just gonna take a little bit more work to cover the area. However, chalk pastels are not very good to use for this project because the dust from the pastels migrates down into the lines. And we repeat the first step. This time the lines that I engrave are going to press into the areas of the board that are already colored yellow and remain yellow. And to keep track of what I've already drawn, I'm going to use a green pen this time. Now, since this is a sunflower, I'm going to want most mostly yellow lines. So you're going to see me use a lot of green lines, just kind of filling each of those petals. Once again, using firm hand pressure. You can even come here in the middle and do just some very short, short little lines, almost like a stipple effect. All right, now I've finished all of the lines that I want to remain yellow. And let's pull this up again and take a look. We can see there's a lot more lines and you can see the lines that have pressed down into the yellow color and picked it up on the back of the paper too. So this time, let's go with an orange color stick. You'll notice that I am choosing to work light to dark. And take a look. You can see the white lines are going to remain white. And now the yellow lines are remaining yellow. The color stick is just gliding right over the surface. It's not going down into the embossed lines at all. 
I can continue making as many layers and engraved lines as I'd like. I can work on small areas at a time. I can create stipple and other interesting line work. Let's take a look at the finished sunflower now. You can see from all the different pen colors that there were four different levels of engraving. And that would be five colors on the top of that. All of the examples that I have here with me today, you can take a look at the drawings that accompany them, and you can see where each individual layer is indicated by the ballpoint color. It also works really great on black illustration board, too. So if you're ready to give it a try, visit digblick.com and type ballpoint engraving in the search field.